everyone this is a video about a sony 6300 camera i've done an initial reaction unboxing style video i've subsequently been on vacation with it for about two weeks and i'm a long-term canon user 5d3 uh, which i what i shot this video on and i was concerned that i was going to have problems with it if i'm on vacation i want to make sure i have a good camera so i actually brought both cameras the Canon and the Sony here. I ended up using only the Sony. I never had any problems with the usage of it and I wanted to do a quick video of the really the pros and cons after using it uh, every day um, out, in, out in the world. <laughs> uh, kind of rugged hiking uh, beach locations near the ocean, obviously not in the ocean. Um, but you know you can see that it's definitely a little bit more worn than what i had it when it was out of the box and some pros and cons i mean if you're hiking with this thing the weight difference compared to the canon is immediately apparent it is distinctly less weight than the canon 5e3 with the lenses um, if you put on a Canon lens, which I have the Metabones adapter, it uh, you can add a bit more weight. But I use, I did use Canon lenses, I did use the kit lens. Um, but hiking with this thing is so much more enjoyable than the 5D3. So that was, I'm more likely to bring it. That's one thing, and it's just more comfortable. Um, the dynamic range with the pictures I took, I mentioned this before, it's, it's distinctly better than the Canon. It's, the colors are more vibrant. I can do more with the raw files. I can bump up more shadows. I can bump up more highlights. Um, I'm very impressed with that, and that continued uh, through the vacation as well. Um, you know, the speed of using uh, the camera, you can... Um, you know use these different lenses with the metabones you can see here but the frame rate is pretty cool it's also a disadvantage is a disadvantage in that i've wound up with so many different uh frames that it, their files are a lot more difficult to sort through the, the kind of the the editing queuing process um calling process rather um you know the use of the lenses which you can see on the screen here that's pretty cool it's the kit lens or the canon lenses with the metabones i didn't really have any issues with the metabones adapter you could argue maybe i missed a few shots because it hunted on focus a bit i'll talk about that in a second but i mean it's pretty cool that i can use my old lenses i i brought uh four different canon lens with canon lenses with me which was kind of overkill. I didn't necessarily bring him hiking every time, but uh, just having the option was neat. Um, the 4K quality, it's it's amazing. So if you put this on a tripod, you hold it very still, you rest it on the ground or something, it, it's distinctly uh, awesome video. Um, you know, the wear and tear on this thing, you can kind of see that I, it's a little scuffed up. I scratched the back of the LCD. I had it all wrapped up in my backpack. Yeah, I think it just came uncovered and scratched against something, so I'm a bit disappointed about that. Um, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, it's pretty cool that you can connect your phone to this through wireless. Um, it's good and bad. It's I like having the option. I had no none of that option with the 5D, right? Um, so I can share a photo quickly to Instagram, Facebook, Flickr, whatever it is. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, to talk more about the cons and the pros, that way the cons on this thing. But the cons, if you do a lot of research on this camera, you'll hear about the focusing, how amazing it is. It, it's true, it does focus fast, but I'll say that it's not necessarily accurate. Did you intend to focus on this particular thing? If you have two people that are kind of stacked, they're not the same distance from you, and you want both of them in focus, it's often going to pull the one that is closest to the camera. So it will focus extremely fast, but it's not necessarily the correct, the most accurate focus that you wanted. I found that it still does it with the kit lens. The kit lens is a bit more fast than the, the Metabones, but um, I think the, the error rate is about the same. Um, 
I did have several missed shots from that, that things are either just outright out, out of focus or the non-intended focus trees in the background versus a turtle that you know that I had and that I was trying to capture. Um, the other thing is that the the 4K video, while it's amazing in this camera, if you don't have it tripod mounted or motion stabilized, it's the video is pretty close to useless. If you're, I had a, a lot of shots where I was hiking with this thing, holding it in my hand. It's just wobbly everywhere. It's too blurred. It's too many pixels shifting all at once. So that's a bit disappointing. All cameras kind of do it, but since the this one has 4K uh, pixels and the high bit rate, it seems to amplify that problem. If you do more research on this, you'll you'll run into the an overheating issue. On my vacation and the hot sun of Hawaii, I didn't run into any overheating issues. It was, I just did several hundred shots a day, all kinds of video. I didn't run into it. The one time I'm, when I was at home playing outside with it, I did. So, but I also ran into overheating issue with my 5D uh, several years ago with it being in my backpack and it not working. So I, did, I don't think that's a showstopper, at least yet in my own experience. Um, so more to watch on that. Um, a bit more cons about this thing. It's more of an irritant than a complete don't buy it. But uh, time lapse it requires special software that you have to download through a somewhat cumbersome process through Sony's website. And you have to pay $10 for it. You know, it's pretty cheap to have, you know, a $1,000 camera at least and then have to pay 10 more dollars for time-lapse functionality. It, I don't know, that just kind of rubs me a bit the wrong way. And then the time-lapse application ultimately was not that great in the first place. Um, the menus are challenging. There's a lot of them. They're the wide and deep. Uh, it takes a while to go through them. Um, but, you know, I guess that offers flexibility at the same time as well. Um, you can see me play in the video earlier that the camera is, it's, I had some dirt and LCD scratch there. It's not environmentally sealed. I knew that it's certainly not weather sealed. Um, it is durable, feels good in the hand, but I'm a bit disappointed with the scratch already on the LCD. Uh, I got sand throughout it and sand is the worst Thing to get into cameras. I have it in my 5D, but the uh, the rotating wheel you can see in the image here, the down select right there is, it's a bit off. I think there's some kind of sand stuck behind it, um, so it doesn't push down as easily. But it is what it is. You you, you want to use the camera, not overly. Uh, if you overly protect it, you're less likely to use it. I guess. So the other thing I would say is that the LCD is very nice, but I mean, this is the age of smartphones. Many people have them, not everyone, but the LCD on this camera is so nice, you just assume that it's touchscreen and you want to you wanna touch it, you want to navigate through the menus, but nope, not going to work. So that's, I wish they could have had the touchscreen with a screen that also kind of rotated as well. Um, for a vlogging or kind of a selfie style um, uh, LCD, you can see what's going on. You can attach your phone to the camera and get a little tripod mount for the top of the camera, a flash mount, and then view yourself through the camera. But it, it takes a long time to set up and configure through the software on the phone and the camera. There's a bit of a lag. It's not a perfect situation it's a bit precarious once you have it on as well anyway so um well i mentioned it's a benefit that the connection to the phone is pretty cool um it's also kind of a drag and that it's it's not hard but slow to set up it it just takes a while you got to navigate through menus both on the phone and the camera if you could set it up once and just push a button and be done with it, that would be awesome. Um, GoPro has a bit more, they have a very similar, you know, direct Wi-Fi access method, but the GoPro method just seems to go a bit faster. 
So hopefully they can improve that. A bit disappointed in the software on this. So, but overall, the picture quality and the video quality on a tripod is just amazing. I'm very happy with it. I like that it's small, uh, lightweight. You know, with this thing, I don't have a lot of reasons to pull out my 5D anymore, although this video does look pretty good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I have it. The pros outweigh the cons. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, more videos to come on this. Um, very fun camera. Thanks.